So the other day I was emptying out one of our vacuums. We, uh, we have some pollens that we pack over here, pollen powder, and it actually uh, spills on the floor sometimes. So long over a year ago, we had to vacuum up some pollen that went on the carpet. And I dumped it out here the other day and I couldn't really tell what was going on. And Sherry said, bees are flying around in the grass here. And I noticed, oh, that's where I dumped that vacuum out and it had some pollen grains in it. So you can see here, the bees are drilling down into uh, the grassy area because it's kind of warm today, even though it's Valentine's Day, February the 14th, they're trying to get anything pollen that they can get. Now I put some sugar water out because they are flying and they're not touching it. Let me show you another spot. So I decided to feed them a whole bunch of pollen because, you know, this is what they want more than they want sugar water. Try not to get stung here, but gosh, look at this. I just took some carpet and I put some pollen powder out here. And as you can see, the bees are actually hovering over it, stirring it up into the air. And as they do, they're just getting it back in their pollen baskets on their hind legs and taking it back to the hive. Now, I want to tell you guys that this is not an opportunity for us to think that we're out of winter. February the 14th, 2024, right now, um, we're not out of winter. What do you do in a, on a day like today when it's kind of warmed up nicely, bees are flying, it's sunny, not very windy, hives are very active. And one of the things I want to share with you is I live stream every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central Time. And one of the questions that somebody asked me was, what do I do with my winter bee kinds? Because I'm afraid they might start melting and it might get warm enough to melt. So I'm going to open up a hive. We're going to look at one to see if it is melting. And then do they get robbed out? We'll take a look at that, too. So we have a lot to do today in today's video. So thanks for joining me, by the way. I do love answering questions on my live stream. So if you have an opportunity to join me every Thursday night, I'll leave a link in the description below. It's a fun time for us to do a lot of talking and community involvement with bees and beekeepers. <laughs> so uh, this is just a great way. If you want to know more about what I do here, I simply buy uh, pollen powder like Ultra Bee or something, and I pour it out here on a dry day and I just let the bees fly. And if you can uh, kind of look up close, you, you would be able to see that their legs, their back legs are getting filled uh, because they work that pop, the pollen uh, substitute back onto their hind legs by hovering over it and actually stirring it into the air. They're actually flying through a mist of this pollen substitute and putting it on their hind legs, taking it back to their hive. And we might even see back at the hive that we're going to open up. We might even see them um, with it on their hind legs. Here's one. Let me see if you can get a close shot of this. Look at those hind legs. The pollen baskets are full of just the pollen that they're getting here. The neat thing about this is it's so cool because when bees are doing this, it's almost like they know you're trying to help them out and the bees aren't bothering you. Look at that pollen basket, how full it is on the back of these bees. And, you know, they're not bothering me. They're just going after this pollen. It's a lot of fun just to be out here with the bees on a warm day and observe them. You see, they're actually working their, their legs, pushing that pollen back to that hind leg using a little saliva to kind of get it moist to stay back there. But they're not getting that pollen anywhere else except right here, and it's beautiful. All right, it's time to see how the bees are doing after that blast of cold air we had a week or so ago. Oh, wow, look at that. For Illinois on the prairie, that's a lot of bees that are in great shape. Look at that. But look at this, they've eaten about everything on the winter be kind again, except a little bit here. So I'm gonna swap it out with one over here. And look what I did here. I actually added a little bit of honey. Well, okay, a lot of honey. 
and uh, thought it would bait them a little bit, give them a little liquid here. So we'll see what happens. In order to get the rest of this, uh, the bees off of this, I'm just gonna kind of tap it a little bit like this. I got most of them off. Today the bees are actually flying just a little bit. I'm gonna try to hold the camera and do this with one hand. All right, so take the winter be kind with the candy facing down. Put it like this. There we go. Look at that. Oh boy, that's great. And of course they can point in and out of their entrance there. And then we put the top back on it. And I put a brick on it. I'm just amazed that these bees overwintered so well. It's so interesting to experience beekeeping this time of the year. And a lot of you are probably thinking like I am, like, what's my next step? What am I supposed to do? Because you know, you're facing this time when you have these February warm-ups or wherever you live, a warm-up, late winter, mid-winter, and then you know winter's not over. That's the thing for me. I know that I'm going to have probably another snow or two, and I'm going to have a couple of three more times where the winter gets really bad again, really cold again. In fact, I can see it already in my forecast. But a couple of days here, it's going to be like this. And so what you have to do, you still have to maintain your bees. That's a critical thing. Maintain winter. If you're still like in the north like I am and it's not going to uh, be spring for another, what, six weeks maybe? Uh, don't give up on your winter management. Keep feeding them. Take advantage of a day like today to feed them some pollen powder if it's dry outside. Uh, that's really what they're wanting right now. Believe it or not, I, I've just proven this by the bees telling me. I gave them sugar water and I gave them right beside them pollen powder substitute. Guess what they did not touch? They didn't touch the sugar water because I'm feeding them winter be kind. They've got plenty of carbohydrates. They need more protein to raise more brood now. So that's what I'm working on today is uh, helping you guys kind of understand that you still got to maintain this. So if you're feeding them candy boards, winter be kind, something on the top in the wintertime, and you still got uh, cold spells coming, don't give up on that. Would I feed them sugar water now? No, because I looked at the forecast, there's not enough days ahead of me so they can take uh, cleansing flights. It's gonna drop too cold again, the sugar water's not gonna be real productive as it chills. So there's not enough time for me to go to the trouble on all the colonies here to put one-to-one uh, -one sugar water on there. But I would do that, my target date is March the 4th for me, 42 days before my first dandelion. So I'm watching for March the 4th and waiting for it. Now, getting back to the question that was asked on my live stream, and it was all about, you know, what do I do with my winter bee kind? Is it melting? No, it's my winter bee kinds are not melting on a day like today. In fact, I never worry about winter bee kinds melting on a very large populated colony because the colony is consuming it. They're using moisture. They're, they're di uh, diluting it, breaking it down with their own humidity. But any help they get from a warmer day, they're going to consume it very quickly. They're wanting to consume it. So now if you had it on a very tiny colony and it warmed up to 90 degrees and it was still, you know, five pounds of sugar there, it could possibly melt. I don't know. But it's not to, I don't worry about that. I, I think uh, as I looked at this one, uh, the candy that's on there is still pretty solid. I looked at the, the board. I don't see anything like, uh, you know, candy dripping. I just see the humidity from that hive having a solid bottom board. So I appreciate the question. It's a great question. Uh, now, what about robbing? I watch for that. You know, I have around 20 plus colonies in my YouTube studio yard here. And um, I'm watching that. But one of the ways that I observe it is, that I can see, uh, I don't see fighting at the winter bee kind hole. The bees are just going in and out, doing their thing, so I don't worry about that. But if you're in an area where uh, bees might become more aggressive toward trying to get um, food off of your winter bee kind, then you can always take some Gorilla Tape or some duct tape or something 
and cover that hole up if you think they're going to rob it and, and kind of force your bees to use the lower entrance. You can always do that. Um, but again, uh, just, just be aware that if you're like me, you're living up north and you get these warm up spells, um, don't feed them sugar water unless you have a good week of temperatures where they're flying and maintain your hives uh, with the winter bee kinds on them, candy on top, because now they're raising brood. That's critical. Now's the time that they really need that protein from the pollen substitute that we're giving them, like we've seen today. Now, if you want more information on beekeeping, maybe today my video has inspired you to maybe start uh, thinking about becoming a beekeeper. I made a video on how to start beekeeping this year, and there's still plenty of time to get your packages. We sell bees. It's still time for you, no matter where you live in the U.S., still time to get rolling uh, by spring. Watch my video right here, how to start beekeeping. I'll see you guys over there.